welcome to What If I Survived, a miniseries on trans series where we talk about what would happen to your favorite characters if they never died in the Transformers Cinematic Universe. This episode is brought to you by Decepticons Red Bob German, played in Claiborne, and Accent Super Roblox Andy. And the character that we're going to be talking about today is Dino. <laughs> And stay there. So after Operation Firestorm and Optimus Prime's message in Revenge of the Fallen, in theory, Dino came down in a third wave of Autobots, along with the Wreckers and Q. When he landed, he scanned a Ferrari 458 Italia, and he later joined up with the Autobots and the Nest team. So the first of Dino we see is him on a mission with B, Q, and Sideswipe to help take out an illegal nuclear weapons site in the Middle East. Dino transforms to keep the soldiers from sending backup, and the others do their business taking care of the nuclear site. Later in the film, Dino and the others regroup at the Nest base. He stuck around in Sentinel Prime's resurrection and for Sam's argument with Carly. Also, he waited out Side with B and Sideswipe until Sam picked up Sentinel, and this is when the epic freeway chase begins. So, while Dino, B, and Sideswipe are escorting Sentinel Prime to Nest, the dreads appear. So B and Sideswipe convert into their stealth force modes, but Dino transforms the latch on the hatchet so Bombi can take him out easier. And basically after this scene, he is just really a background character for the rest of the movie, and he really deserves some more screen time because he was an amazing character. He did not have your standard weapons, he actually had blades. He was very cool. And if you're wondering why Dino never got an official toy from Hasbro, is because some licensing issues with Ferrari. But luckily we got a good third party replacement. Now let's go move on to Age of Extinction. And it is rumored he was killed by Cemetery Wind, but we do not see him in any of the other films. And the true reason why Dino was never in any other movie was because his voice actor died a week after the release of Dark of the Moon. But what would happen if Dino and his voice actor never died? Well, this is how it would work out. So after Dark of the Moon, when the alliance with Nest and the Autobots is broken, Dino and Sideswipe are hiding together, but because Cemetery Wind and Lockdown show up, they split up. Lockdown goes for Sideswipe and Cemetery Wind goes for Dino, but because Dino is a Ferrari, he uses this to his advantage and escapes from Cemetery Wind. And he later goes to the desert to meet up with Bombi, Hound, Crossers, and Drift. And this is before Optimus Prime shows up. And once Optimus Prime does show up, he would question Dino on what happened, and Dino would tell Prime the story on how he was split up with Sideswipe to escape, and the Autobots would mourn for Sideswipe's potential death, and the other Autobots that were killed by Cemetery Wind. So what would Dino do in Age of Extinction? What I think he would do is, he would be helping the Autobots getting into KSI, also helping Optimus taking down Galvatron, but when Lockdown comes, Dino gets severely damaged by him, and Lockdown throws Dino to the ground and leaves him, and this would mean that Lockdown would take his grand prize Optimus Prime to his night ship, leaving Dino behind because he's worthless in his eyes. So what would Dino do after this scene? Well, he would meet up with the others and Hound fix him up because Hound knows medic skills, kind of like he is in The Last Night. And once Galvatron takes control of the KSI drones, Dino would help Hound and B, and instead of Hound killing two heads, I would give Dino his own epic fight with two heads. And at the end of Age of Extinction, between the fight with Lockdown and Optimus, Dino shows up with Cade, while Bombi stays behind, fulfilling his orders to protect Tessa and Shane. Optimus tells Dino that this is my fight, but Dino stays to give a crack at Lockdown to avenge Sideswipe, and this is how this fight would have been played out. Cade shoots Lockdown in the leg, bringing him down. Dino tries to jump on him. As Dino does this, Lockdown gets out his hook, and he stabs him in his leg. Cade sees this, so he shoots the hook, and it lets Dino free. Lockdown got angry at Cade, but before he could kill Cade, Dino shoots out his hooks, pulling Lockdown back. Lockdown rolls towards Dino, and Dino releases his blades, chopping in half Lockdown. And he later pulls the sword out of Optimus Prime, and Prime thanks him. And that's all for Age of Extinction. Now moving on to The Last Knight, and here is where it gets interesting. So in Cade's workshop, he somehow gives Dino the ability to turn invisible, like his G1 counterpart. And this would be in between the events of AoE and The Last Night. And Dino got his power after B got his rebuilding ability. And if you guys want to see how B got that, click on the card above. So once Dino had this ability, he trained with Hound to get his moves more accurate. Time passes, and this is when Megatron's crew shows up in the last night. And this is where Dino's gonna bite the dust. And this is how it would all go down. So, Dreadbot runs into Dino, but Dino turns invisible just in a nick of time before he can get attacked. Once Dino is behind Dreadbot, he goes uninvisible and he hooks Dreadbot. Dreadbot shoots off one of Dino's hooks that is on his back, and then he takes a shot at Dino. Dino gets hit, and in this process, his other hook got detached from Dreadbot. Dino turns invisible again and transforms, and he rams Dreadbot. He later transforms back into a robot mode, and is about to slice Dreadbot, as he is still invisible. 
Dreadbot can see the dust moving, so he shoots up and it hits Dino in the chest, making him visible again. As Dreadbot is about to shoot him again, Dino puts his blades together like a shield, and a shot ricochets back into Dreadbot's face, severely damaging him. Dino remembers from Sideswipe that he gave Crankcase and Crowbar another chance to escape, so he follows in his friend's footsteps, as he tells Dreadbot to put the weapon down. But as we all know, Decepticons never learned their lesson, and Dreadbot latches out another shot at Dino. For this, Dino slices Dreadbot, and he says to his corpse, I gave you a chance. Now, at this point, Dino sees Crosshairs and Drift having a hard time taking down Onslaught, so he hooks the arm of Onslaught that has a big fat cannon on it and pulls it back. Onslaught lets out a grunt, but as Dino pulls his arm back, one of the bullets hits a propane tank that's next to Dino, badly damaging Dino once it exploded. Onslaught threw a train at Crosshairs and Drift, and he makes his way to the severely damaged Dino. Dino tries to get up, but he can't, and then Onslaught steps on him, saying, another one to my kill count, and he decapitates Dino with his claw. And he drives off, and this is where Onslaught would retransform and then he later gets killed by crossers and drift because he killed Dino. Well, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed, please give a big fat thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. If you have a character that you want to see in What If I Survived, give a comment down below and I'll do a video on it as soon as possible. Well, this has been Trans Theories, signing off. Well, you call